Hello, dear uh, students. Good afternoon, good morning, at whatever time you're watching this video. Welcome back to our class online. In this particular lesson, we are looking at Kramer's rule for equations with three unknowns. Kramer's rule with equations for three unknowns. Throughout the lesson also, we will also focus on the adjoints of three by three matrix using Kramer's rule, um, the inverse of a three by three and higher order matrices, and how to solve a specific set of equations with a certain number of unknowns using Kramer's rule. Note that this Kramer's rule is the easiest, fastest and shortest method which you can use in solving most of these equations. Stay tuned. Watch this video to the end and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. So Kramer's rule can be used to solve for X, Y, and Z in the three by three and also apl applicable to higher order uh, matrices. Let us note that Kramer's rule has the advantage that a particular unknown could be solved for directly without the strain of getting the others. So you can use Kramer's rule and solve for X directly, or you can solve for Y directly or for Z directly using just Kramer's rule without needing to look for the other unknowns. So let us get the analysis with Kramer's rule. So the first step is, let this be a pair or set of equations with three unknowns. So we have equation one, equation two, and equation three. So let this be the equations. Then in step two, we are looking for the determinant, the determinant. And this determinant is going to be the coefficient matrix on the left-hand side. So we have A1, B1, C1 on row one, A2, B2, C2. As you can see, these are the coefficients of X, Y, and Z in equation one, equation two, and equation three. So we look for the determinant of this coefficient matrix. And this determinant that X, so when we obtain this determinant, that is the second step. And then we need to also look for the determinant of X, the determinant of Y, and the determinant of, of Z. And this is how we do the analysis. The determinant of X, this is the determinant. We take this same determinant and to get the determinant of X, we are going to replace this first column by the matrix on the right, by the coefficient of this matrix on the right-hand side. So our uh, that X here is going to be equal to this same matrix, this same matrix, but now we are going to replace the first column by D1, D2, and D3. So that is what we are talking about. To so replace the first column by D1, D2, and D3. We equally look for that Y the determinant of Y. Determinant of Y, we are now going to replace the second column. So this is the same matrix, but we now replace the second column by the coefficients, uh, by these constants D1, D2, and D3. So we have, that is it. And for the last matrix, you can guess which one you are going to replace, right? For that Z, what can we replace? Yes, exactly. For that Z, we replace the last column by D1, D2, and D3. How do we obtain the value of X directly or the value of Y directly or the value of Z directly? The value of X can be obtained directly by saying, all right, so you can see these are the replacements you have done, right? So to obtain X in step three now, X is equal to that X on Delta. Similarly, what do Y be? Y will be equal to that Y on Delta. And of course, Z will be equal to the Z on Delta. So we can solve X directly, solve Y directly, or solve Z directly. This is the advantage that Kramer's rule has. You can solve only for X or only for Y or only for Z directly without looking for the others. So with this Kramer's rule, the step one, you write down this three by three matrix or higher order matrix in this form. Step two, you look for the determinant of the coefficient matrix and the subdeterminants, that's the subdeterminants, the determinants of X, determinant of Y, and determinant of Z. 
And these determinants are obtained by replacing respectively the first column, second column, and third columns of the determinant matrix of coefficients. And in step three now, x is that delta x on delta, y is delta y on delta, and z is delta z on delta. Let us take an example to spice this very beautiful concept that we have just seen. So uh, this is the summary on the right-hand side. I have allowed the summary there. Example one, by applying Kramer's rule, solve for A, B, and C in the system of equations given. So equation one, we have two A plus three C equals minus one. A plus B minus C equals five, and two C plus B equals one. So we have to apply Kramer's rule. With Kramer's rule, the first step is to look for delta. Our delta is the coefficient matrix. So delta will be equal to the coefficients of A, B, and C in equation one, we have two, zero, three, because there is no B. In the second equation, we have one, one, minus one. And in the third equation, we have two, one, zero, because there is no C here. So we replace it by zero, right? I'm sorry, we don't have A, rather. Look at this very well. This is the mistake we should not make. There is no A, so A is zero. B is one, and C is two. So we have zero, one, two. And the determinant of this matrix, you know how to get the determinant is equal to nine. Now let us look for that x. That x, we are going to replace the first column by the, uh, the first column by minus one, five, one. As you can see, we have replaced it and you have written it in red. If you copy out the same matrix, we'll replace this. So that x is also equal to nine when we get the determinant. Let's look for that y. With that y, we are replacing now by the second column by minus one, five, one. So with that y, we are going to replace the second column in this determinant matrix by the coefficients on the right-hand side or the constants on the right-hand side. And this determinant gives us a value of 27. The determinant gives us a value of 27. And then for that z, we replace the last column by um, minus one, five, one. And with this last column, when we look for this determinant after replacing it, the determinant of z is equal to minus nine. So we now dive directly to step three. So what would be the value of x? x will be equal to delta x on delta. So we have nine on nine, that is equal to one. y will be equal to delta y, which is 27 on delta, we have three. And delta z gives us z to be equal to minus nine on nine. So these are the values of x, y, and z respectively, one, three, and minus one. As you can see, the method is very short and very straight. If I was asked to solve only for x, I will only look for delta and for delta x, and then I divide. I have solved for x in three steps. And the same thing with y and another value that asked me to look for. So this is the advantage of Kramer's rule. Let's take another example. So with this second example, we are solving for x, y, and z using Kramer's rule. Please let us talk along. You, you, I know you are seeing the screen, so we discuss as we solve. So when I get to each step, be saying something as we solve. So the first thing is to look for delta, right? And the coefficient matrix here is, we have one minus two, one. The second line, one, five, one. The third line, we have two minus one, four. And what is going to be delta, when you carry out this determinant, you are going to have 14 as the determinant of this matrix. Now let's look for delta x. Delta x will be equal to replace this first column by six minus 115. So we replace the first column of this determinant by six minus 115. Uh, that's six minus 115. These are the values on the right-hand side, the constants on the right-hand side. This gives us a determinant of 14. Note that the answers, it must not always be like this. Like the previous case, we had nine and nine. Does not mean that you always have the same thing, okay? Now let's look for delta y. With delta y, we are going to replace now by the second column by six minus one and 15, right? So we do this replacement and we get the determinant that y will be equal to, the value that you obtain will be equal to minus 14. Now, similar for that z, that z will give us uh, 42, right? So the z equal to 42. From here, our x will be equal to delta x on delta, that is 14 on 14. Delta y will be equal to minus 14 on 14. And delta z will be equal to 42 on 14. That gives us three. 
So these are the values of X, Y, and Z respectively of Kramer's rule. Please don't just watch this video. You have to watch and equally solve. Uh, please take note of this value here. It is one, uh, that's a typo. That's equal to one. Let me correct it at once. So this value here is one, not a three, sorry. So this value here is equal to one. That's what we have. So make sure that you solve this. Don't just watch. It's not a movie. You have to watch and solve at the same time, okay? So um, here we have this exercise to solve this exercise. And don't please don't forget to subscribe. Our next lesson, which is lesson 1F, is still on Kramer's rule. We are going to see how we can use Kramer's rule to find the adjoints of a matrix and to find the inverse. It is very, very short to use Kramer's rule to find the adjoints and the inverse of a three by three and higher order matrices. Please don't forget to subscribe and to share this video. We wish you the best and bye-bye.